Here we'll learn about nitrogen transport and the urea cycle. To begin, start a table. Denote that urea is the end product of the catabolism of nitrogen, which enters the urea cycle as ammonium. Denote that it occurs in liver cells, also referred to as hepatocytes. Indicate that carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1, CPS1, catalyzes the first reaction. Show that the substrates are bicarbonate, free ammonia, and ATP. Denote that the urea cycle is particularly active after a high protein meal and during states of starvation. Now let's learn the reactions of the cycle. Draw a portion of a mitochondrion in the cytosol and label the matrix. The first two reactions of the cycle occur in the mitochondrial matrix and the remaining occur in the cytosol. Indicate that carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1, CPS1, catalyzes the first reaction, carbamoyl phosphate synthesis. Indicate that it's the rate limiting step, thus CPS1 is, in essence, the pacemaker enzyme of the urea cycle. Show that the substrates are bicarbonate, free ammonia, which derives primarily from glutamine and asparagine, and ATP, which makes it essentially an irreversible reaction. Show that these substrates combine to produce the first intermediate, carbamoyl phosphate, which is carbon bonded to an amide and double bonded to an oxygen, and phosphate, which is phosphorus with four oxygen. Show that in the process, ADP, hydrogen, and phosphate are released. Next, show that the cofactor N-acetylglutamate is necessary for CPS1 to proceed. It's sufficiently present after a protein meal, especially. Indicate that the enzyme N-acetylglutamate synthase, NAGS, synthesizes it from glutamate and acetyl-CoA. Arginine positively regulates this reaction. Arginine is a marker of high protein conditions and thus positively regulates the urea cycle. Now for the second reaction in the cycle, citrulline formation. An anhydride bond connects the carbamoyl and phosphate groups, which makes the carbamoyl primed for transfer. So show that it easily moves to ornithine to form citrulline. Still within the mitochondrial matrix, via ornithine transcarbamoylase, and the phosphate is lost. Next show that citrulline exits the matrix and enters the cytosol. Introduce an aspartate and specify its amino group, which will track through the urea cycle. Show that arginosuccinate synthetase catalyzes the reaction to combine aspartate with citrulline to form arginosuccinate. Indicate that 1 ATP is converted to AMP and pyrophosphate to drive forward the reaction. Pyrophosphate is later hydrolyzed as well. Now draw the terminal carbon of arginosuccinate so we can see that its two nitrogens form from both the free ammonia from the beginning of the cycle and the aspartate. Next, show that the arginosuccinase cleaves this large molecule into arginine and fumarate. Elsewhere, we've seen the importance of fumarate as a carbon skeleton intermediate in the citric acid cycle and its role in the integration of metabolism. Now show that arginase hydrolyzes arginine to ornithine and urea. Specify that urea carries the two nitrogen picked up during the urea cycle. Again, one from ammonia and one from aspartate. Draw the terminal carbon of arginine bound to two highlighted amine groups, from free ammonia and from free aspartate. Urea simply are two highlighted amine groups joined by a carbonyl carbon, originally from bicarbonate. Urea can safely diffuse into circulation and travel to the kidneys where it's excreted as urine. Use a final arrow to indicate that ornithine re-enters the cycle at citrulline formation. 
Let's review some key facts about carbamoyl phosphate synthase 1, CPS1, in comparing it to carbamoyl phosphate synthase 2, CPS2. CPS2 exists in the cytosol and catalyzes pyrimidine synthesis, nucleic acid synthesis. In short, CPS1 exists in the mitochondrial matrix, whereas CPS2 is located in the cytosol, the cytoplasm. CPS1 uses ammonia as its nitrogen source, whereas CPS2 uses glutamine. CPS1 requires N-acetylglutamate as an allosteric activator. We learned that it requires a high protein meal or some sort of protein activator to drive the urea cycle, whereas CPS2 does not. This makes sense because the body's constantly needing nucleic acids. CPS1 is found in liver and in kidney. Again, this makes sense. The urea cycle is located in certain organs dedicated to urea excretion. CPS2 is not. It's ubiquitous. Again, this makes sense. The entire body needs nucleic acids. This concludes our diagram.